Hello everyone. Welcome to the fifth session on the topic Vital Statistics presented by Shantara Kulkarni, Department of Statistics, Kuktipu College of Commerce and Science, Belgavi. Now, in this class, we will be studying the remaining formulas for mortality. Just let me brief what you all did in the previous class or which were the formulas you just learnt in the previous class. We studied crude death rate, we studied age specific death rate and standardized death rate. In today's class, we will be learning the next mortality rate that is infant mortality rate. Infant is a baby whose age is less than one year. And how do we define infant mortality rate? It is defined as average number of infant deaths per thousand live births in a year and infant means children aged less than one year. Now let us see how do we write this in the formula. IMR is equal to number of deaths among infants in the year divided by total number of live births in the same year into thousand. In this children you have to remember still births are not included in the infant deaths. Let us take a simple example and see how do we apply the formula of infant mortality rate. Here the example in a town in a year 62,418 live births occurred and of these 3,207 infants died in the same year. Compute infant mortality rate. What is given? live births is given that is 62,418 then the number of infant deaths are given that is 3,207 we write the formula IMR is equal to number of deaths among the infants in the year divided by the total number of live births in the same year into 1000 so how many deaths are there of the infant that is 3,207 and the total number of live births is 62,418 into 1000 which gives a value 51.38. These examples are for exclusively two marks and they are very simple also. The next mortality rate is neonatal mortality rate in short NMR. Now neonatal means those babies whose age is less than 28 days. Neonatal means they are very uh, little babies whose age is just 28 days and how do we define neonatal it is the average number of neonatal deaths per thousand live births in a year this is also simple nmr is equal to total number of deaths of neonatal babies in a year divided by total number of live births occurring the year into thousand and they have just given what is the neonatal rate of India I mean in the year 2010 so it is for 2010 the NMR is 32 per thousand we will be solving an example further once we finish the next one the next death rate is maternal mortality rate maternal the word refers to mother so this death rate exclusively tells about those death rates who die I mean those mothers who die during the process of childbirth so maternal mortality rate is defined as average number of deaths among mothers due to cause causes relating to childbirth per thousand births in a year so how do we write the formula MMR is equal to total number of deaths of mothers due to childbirth in a year divided by total number of total number of births in a year into thousand maternal means the word refers to mother and it is the number of deaths of those mothers who die during the process of childbirth now let us check an example on maternal mortality rate in a community in a specific year 4000 births occurred in the case of uh, 40 of above the mothers died due to childbirth compute MMR what info is given to us or what information is given to us there are how many births are there 4000 births are there and among them 40 
have died due to childbirth i mean 40 mothers have died due to childbirth the formula here we will write MMR is equal to total number of deaths of mothers due to childbirth in a year divided by total number of births in a year into 1000. So total number of mothers death is 40 and the total number of live births is 4000 into 1000 that is equal to 10 deaths of mothers due to childbirth. So infant mortality rate, neonatal mortality rate and maternal mortality rate these are the remaining death rates and you will be getting examples exclusively of two marks only and they are simple to calculate also you just have to pay attention that's very important now coming to the last part of vital statistics that is life tables here also in life table uh, the weightage of marks is one or two marks like you'll be getting a definition of one mark you'll be getting a definition of two marks also and uh, the uses of life tables these are the main things covered under life tables from the examination point of view let us see what is life table now life table describes the mortality and survival patterns of a population see the word life table itself says that it is going to tell you about the life and death of a certain population. Now, how do we define it in a more technical way? The life table gives the life history of a cohort as it is gradually diminished by deaths. Or we could easily say that it is giving all the detailed information of the life and death process of a particular population. So, in general, I can say that Life table is a tabular presentation of numerical data describing the mort mortality experience of a cohort. Now this word cohort, it is an important definition. Last it is mentioned here and which is in red. Cohort is a group of individuals who are born at the same time and who experience the same mortality conditions. I am repeating it once more. Cohort is a group, group of individuals who are born at the same time and who experience the same mortality conditions. See, practically it's not possible. Nobody can take birth at the same time and nobody, I mean, all of them cannot die at the same uh, time. So this is actually an imaginary group which we use for the life table. It, has, it is a totally an imaginary group. Everybody no doubt can be born in the same year or the same month or the same date. But yes, time, minutes, seconds differ. So in reality, practically, cohort group cannot exist. But for the sake of life table, we are taking this imaginary or fictional group where we consider that in this group, people will take birth at the same time and will experience the same mortality conditions so please remember the definition of cohort it is an imaginary group now the next definition we are going to use here is radix radix is nothing but the size of the cohort now see you have to decide the size of the cohort what that size is going to be are they going to be thousand people or are they going to be ten thousand people so here radix means the size of the cohort and it is generally taken as one lakh now the next definition is longevity. Longevity is the expected number of years that a newborn baby would live. Simple to understand. Yes, when a baby is born, we nobody know when we are going to die. So in general, we say that suppose if a baby is born, it will live up to 75 years or it will live up to 85 years. This length period is known as longevity. Now coming to the, these are all important definition from the examination point of view. This definition of cohort, radix and longevity, longevity is for one mark. Now coming to the uses of life table. This is exclusively for two marks. Now let us see what are the uses where the life table is used. First one, it is used by the life insurance companies to determine the rates of premium for policies of persons of different ages. I am sure you all must be aware what LIC is or life insurance companies they are. There, certain amount will be 
issued so based on that the premium now premium is nothing but the monthly or quarterly or six monthly or yearly amount you need to pay so based on that you need to make the calculation there we will be using the life table that is the first use second one it is used for the measurement of growth of population in the computation of net reproduction rate so this is also used in calculating to or to know the growth of the population here in net reproduction rate a life table is used then the third use it is used for estimating the future population if you want to know how the future population how the trend is whether it is decreasing or increasing or is going to remain same there also we will be using life table coming to the fourth use it is used by the government and private organization in planning healthcare retirement age educational program see our government has to make so many plans and there are so many plans also for all of us by our country and when this planning is being done be it healthcare or be retirement age or be any educational program here also exclusively life table only is used for example healthcare or health insurance you can say even uh, that is a cashless hospital or uh, where you just have to go get admitted and all the expenses are uh, taken care by the particular health insurance company their life table is being used retirement age now certain people will retire at a particular age after that they don't have a job so that how their retired life is secured how it is they can take care of financially then th there also life table is used educational program education program is like your uh, education where you need the requirement of life table Th there also it is used the fifth use it is used for analyzing the effects of mortality on the age and sex composition of a population effects of mortality how what what are the after consequences of the death there also life table is used now the next important part is the components of a life table what are these components now see a typical life table has the following components the first one is denoted by x then lx small dx small qx px capital lx tx and ex we will just read these what these life table or components of life tables are the first one x is equal to it takes the value 0 1 2 3 that is the that is the age of a person so x is denoted by the age of a person small lx number 2 the number of persons living at age x thus l0 is a radix it is actually l0 is a size or the radix dx the number of persons among lx persons reaching age x who die before reaching the age x plus 1 see we are taking all the general notations here we do not really know when a person is taking birth and when he is going to die that's why we are using the words as x plus 1 x 0 whatever these are the general terms and that x can take 0 1 2 3 on so this is the main thing you have to understand qx this is an important definition qx the probability that a person of exact age x will die before reaching the age x plus 1 years so how do we write that formula qx is equal to dx upon lx and this is mortality ratio i am repeating qx is equal to dx upon lx is equal to mortality ratio then as next component is px the probability that a person of age x survives up to age x plus 1 and that px is equal to 1 minus qx so px is equal to 1 minus qx is equal to survival ratio i want to make a very important note here children if suppose this definition is asked in the examination they may say please define mortality ratio you specifically have to use the word the probability that a person of exact age x years will die before reaching the age x plus 1 years you have to use the word probability in mortality ratio as well as in survival ratio i repeat the definition of survival ratio that is you have to use the word the probability that a person of age x survives up to age x plus 1 
so if the word is not used and if you just write something marks will not be allotted to you all you have to make a note of this the next component is lx capital lx now what is that the number of years lived in the aggregate by the cohort of l0 persons between age x and x plus 1 thus lx is equal to lx plus lx plus 1 divided by 2 this is nothing but l0 minus dx divided by 2 so lx is what it is a number of years lived in the aggregate means together all of them all the group in the cohort of l0 persons between age x and x plus 1 it is not an date of individual but it is telling about the whole group the seventh component tx is the total number of years lived by the cohort after attaining age x that is tx is equal to capital l subscript x plus l x plus 1 plus l x plus 2 so on so this is about the total group it will be telling that is the total number of years lived by the cohort after attaining age x the next component is ex the eighth one is small e subscript x expectation of life what is this expectation of life average number of years a person of age x can expect to live under the prevailing mortality conditions that is ex is equal to tx divided by lx now what is this mortality or prevailing mortality conditions now see some incident happens in our life our health may not be well or we may get admitted in the hospital so even after the severe health conditions we overcome and we survive that is known as prevailing mortality conditions everybody has experienced such a thing in everyone's family so expectation of life means even after whatever difficulties we have in our health issues and in spite of that when we overcome that is known as expectation of life here are some simple examples of life table let me just brief one of them to you all what is the example say on life table in a life table if l1 is equal to 95400 and l2 is equal to 93492 then find d1 then we know first let us see let us take the general formula of d that is dx is equal to lx minus lx plus 1 now let us substitute the x value what is this x value here d1 the value of x is 1 here so we will substitute dx it becomes d1 then lx will become l1 x plus 1 if you substitute 1 plus 1 it will become 2 so l1 value is given l2 value is given you substitute and do it these are very simple examples little attention is needed and i am sure our children uh, all of you will do it so similar examples of the same kind are here so children with this actually uh, we finish uh, the topic of vital statistics in the next class we will exclusively deal with one mark and two mark questions you will have a judgment or you can have an idea so what kind of one mark questions will be there or what type of two mark questions will be there so you can prepare and you can organize it properly and do the uh, study also systematically so in this class we are finishing vital statistics but in the next class we will be dealing all the theory part is over under vital statistics on the t- on the topic vital statistics your formulas your examples everything in the next class we are going to do extra for one mark and two marks